What's going on YouTube? West Tavi's RC. So today we are back with the icon tuning video you have all been asking for. So we are going to go over some of the settings in the icon, in the advanced menus, what they mean, how to tune them, and we'll get a flight in. So go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Let's get started. We have our software pulled up here, so we're going to go over a few things on the icon brain software. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go to advanced menus. So we already programmed our icon. We went through all the wizard menus and everything is set up. But for tuning, you really need to go to the advanced menus. And the reasoning for that is in the wizard menu. When you come down to like your setup, you see where you have cyclic gain here. You have cyclic gain here. You have agility. This cyclic gain is only going to give you an overall cyclic. So a lot of the times when you are tuning, that overall cyclic is not what you need. So as you flip through, this will just give you the overall, but you want to go into the actual gain. So we're going to go to the advanced menu. We're going to come over. This will be the page you're on. You're going to come to setup. Click on setup here, and then we're going to come over. We'll start with cyclic. These are going to give you a setup one, two, and three. And as you flip your flight mode switch, you'll see it light up with setup one, two, and three. Setup one is where you would start. Now you're going to have your aileron, your elevator, and then special for every flight mode selection so when you come up here you're gonna have your p gain if you put your mouse over it this right here is going to tell you what it does this parameter the p gain sets how fast the aileron system responds to inputs the higher the p gain value the more locked in feeling the lower the p gain the more spongy feeling now what they're meaning to that as as the helicopter is as you're giving command to the helicopter so as you push forward or now we're on the ailerons so as we go right we're doing a hard right or we're doing a tick tock and the, and the helicopter kind of feels like it's it's overreacting to the stop the p gain is what you're going to go up or down now the i gain again this is the access holding power so this gives you how much holding power the helicopter has Usually the eye gain is pretty good all the time, but if you go up on the eye gain, it'll give it more of a holding power, but you'll get some oscillations, meaning the helicopter will bounce back and forth and too low will just give it that not holding power, like an inconsistent roll rate. Your next is your D gain. Again, this parameter sets the dampening of the stops. So this is how fast the model reacts to that input. The higher the D gain, the higher the result is, the faster it'll stop, but oscillations can happen, meaning as the helicopter stops, the helicopter will shake or, or, or shimmy, so you would go down at that point, and a low D gain will result in the aileron bounce back behavior, meaning as you give it aileron and it bounces, it'll kind of shimmy back and then catch itself. So that's what your PID do for your aileron on all three modes, and the same for your elevator. It's the same exact thing. It hold, It's the holding power is for P, the I is the access hold, and the D is the stops. So your aileron and your elevator PID are identical. Now your feed forward gain. Your feed forward gain is the command that goes directly to the head without the gyro filtering. So that is a high feed gain makes the model more reactive to aileron. So you can turn your, your feed forward gain up to give you more stick command, meaning it feels more connected to your cyclic stick or you could turn it down. Now right here is your max rotation speed. This is how many times the helicopter actually rotates every second. So it'll be 300 degrees, 160 degrees. You can see we have 160, 350, 420 set here. So rotation rate is what you would adjust if you're doing flips and rolls or the helicopter just doesn't seem fast enough. That's what you would adjust right there. Now down here on special is your agility and your tail drag compensation. The agility itself is a very weird thing and I think I don't personally see how going up in the agility like they say makes the model more reactive and going down makes it less more flyboard like I think it's the other way around but on icon it can be weird 35 70 95 you can play with that your tail drag compensation is the amount of elevator elevator correction is applied to the swash plate when pitch is applied meaning if you're giving it pitch and the helicopter is trying to walk out a little bit you would adjust your tail drag compensation. It can have some tail wag, so you have to watch out for that. Now, our next menu here is our tail menu. So this is going to be another PID. This is ID. And this is going to show you our head locking mode here. Now, again, setup one, two, and three. So your I gain, 
it's going to hold the tail power. So now when you adjust your actual gain in the transmitter here, so we'll come down to the transmitter and you can see we have 36, 34, 32. That's an overall gain. Sometimes this overall gain right here doesn't do what we need to do. So every once in a while, you need to get into the icon and set your ID and your pitch precompensation, cyclic precompensation. So your I gain here is the parameter that sets the holding power and the heading hold mode. High eye gain makes the tail hold better in position, but may result in low frequency tail oscillations and overshooting. Low eye gain may result in the helicopter not holding position during movers and inconsistent pirouetting rate. What that means is if you're doing TikToks, elevator, aileron, pyro flips, anything like that, and you notice the tail is walking up or down, you would want to adjust your eye gain, not the overall gain. Now the D gain, it sets the tail stop. So I like to run my D gain as high as possible until it bounces and then I back it off. So that way I can have a really crisp, really solid tail. Pitch precompensation. This is how much tail is a pre or how much tail is applied when feeding pitch. Meaning if you go to do a hard pitch pump out, you go full positive pitch and the tail walks a little bit, you're going to want to adjust the pitch precompensation. And the same with cyclic precompensation right here. This is the same how much tail precompensation when you are feeding cyclic. So if you're getting hard on the maneuvers, aileron TikToks, elevator TikToks, and you're noticing the tails walking up and down, you would come down here to cyclic. If you've already tried your D and I gain, you would come down and adjust your cyclic. Tail asymmetry, this means how many times the helicopter, it rotates evenly. So if you're doing a pirouette left, a pirouette right, the tail, this menu here will give you that, ink, that consistent rate. I've never had to adjust it on any helicopter. I have always leave it at 50. And your tail max rotation speed is going to be the same as your cyclic that we looked over down here for max rotation speed. It's just going to be on the tail. And that is how many times the helicopter rotates a second. So 300 degrees a second, 450 degrees a second, 600, 500 degrees a second. Now you have your governor and your auto level. So this is going to be if you're using Icon Governor, this model is not it's using ESC Governor. If you're using Auto Level and Rescue, and this right here would be like your max angle of degree. So depending on how high you want it to go, your max auto level gain. I've never had to adjust any of this stuff. Only the pitch duration down here, I have used that and adjusted it higher and lower. So when you flip on your Rescue, it'll say it stays on for 0 0.6, 0 0.3, 0 0.2. So you have a full thing here and then inputs another menu that I like to go through and another menu that I like to use and set up and adjust. Now, this is going to be your cyclic stick dead band, your tail stick dead band. And what Dan Ben is, it is, is what gets rid of the center stick. So the higher the number, the bigger of a circle, kind of like Expo, but you also have exponential here too. So an icon runs a negative value. So negative exponentials will make the aileron command response softer around center the greater the negative value, the softer it'll be. The more of a positive value, the faster it'll be. So on my helicopters, I run positive values. It comes set in negative values. So you could play with that for your aileron elevator and tail exponential. And then your pitch lightning. I like to run some pitch lightning. I usually do negative 10, 5, and then 15. And what pitch lightning is, is again, it, it controls your actual pitch around center right here. So it helps with your pitch less sensitive or more sensitive so a negative value meaning that it would be like exponential for your your pitch stick or the higher the value would be like adding so when you just barely get on those hard stops it's instant control right there so i like to run positive but you can play around with that and then again back to your tail dynamic down here this is the softens the tail stops this i turn my tail dynamic up it starts at six if you're running a belted model you can run this as high as it'll go before it creates a, a wag or a, or a vibration uh, but if you're running a torque tube model keep it at six because that instant hard stops will blow the torque tube gears out and then pitch pump this is how much overshoot is applied so i like to run values around 20 to 30 you can see i have 30 set here 30 set here and what pitch pump is, that's when you go to full pitch. So you're, you say you have 12 degrees set and you go to full positive pitch out of a maneuver, a maneuver for a hard stop. It's going to give you another degree of pitch. So it's going to go from 12 to 13 degrees for a second and then bring it back to 12 to help soften the stops. The higher the number, the more it'll do. That's also a great feature there. And then your regular common here is your orientation. Everything, this this site, site section here, sorry, is everything that you do in the wizard, just a little bit more 
not as easy to understand. This right here is where you would adjust your channel output. So this is under receiver. And as you can see, you can see here, we have channel eight, uh, channel two. So your auxiliary two and auxiliary three, if you wanted to use it for like an online or onboard glow driver or any like pair of lights on and off, whatever, you could adjust that here. This is calibration. And again, this is your menu down here. Again, I never really mess with any of this stuff unless I am doing something with my channel output configuration. Your servos, this right here will give you a more selection, just like the wizard menu, but you can actually go into here for throttle, ch change it to 760. Now you have 760 option on the wizard menu before you did not, and you would do it here. Rescue, same thing. This right here will tell us our degrees of rescue so we can adjust our rescue if we want to go for our max angle of degrees. It's at default that at 45, we can go to 55, our pitch max. So right now it's a default value of 75. So when you flip rescue, if you wanted more pitch, you would go down here in the pitch duration, just like we explained on the other page. Same thing, it's a 0.6. When you flip it, if you want it to stay on longer, giving you more pitch, you would adjust that up. Or if you wanted less, you would adjust that down. And then you come down here to utility, which is just copying a setup. Then you have your counter menu here. This menu will see that there's nine hours and 28 minutes and 54 seconds on this icon unit with a total of 158 flights. So you can select what you want it to monitor. You could select main belt, tail belt, head dampeners, head thrust bearings, tail thrust bearings, motor bearings, mufflers, cyclic servos, and so on. You have a big list here of what you want it to actually monitor. So we have main belt, tail belt, head dampeners, head thrust bearings. So you can see here. And then whenever you do a rebuild, you would just click reset and it would reset the counter and it would start all over again. So this model is due to have a new set of head dampeners and be rebuilt on the head. And then your diagnosis over here, this right here is just going to be a log. So we have real-time logs. If we click this right here, we can hit start real-time log. And you're going to see as we shake the helicopter, it's going to show all the things going crazy. And then we can select how we can see here and how we want it to do. We also have, we can stop this. And then we can save the file, we can clear it, we can go through everything. We can also go to recorded logs and we can download recorded logs. So if we download the data, let's say we'll just pick a random log. I don't know which one this is. And then we can watch it come in and we can kind of pinpoint where something is. We could come down here once it loads and all these little check boxes, we can eliminate those. So if we wanna see head or tail or aileron elevator, we can get rid of everything else and just see what we want to see because right now it just looks like a bunch of squiggly lines and we have no idea what we're looking at but if we come down here we can get rid of servo voltage we can get rid of our setup rx we can get rid of our throttle percentage which is out get rid of this we can see our frame rates out aileron percentage out and right now the only thing we have selected is our tail percentage so you can see this is how much we've gone back and forth on our rudder and how long at what part of the flight. But say we want to see where our aileron out was. So we're going to select this and this showing us. And we want to get rid of our tail because we're trying to pinpoint something. And we can just kind of go over the log and understand all of that. Also main rotor RPM. We can see where it's spiked, where it doesn't spike. Really cool thing. Also vibrations. Same thing. This right here will show you vibrations in the helicopter. As we shake it, you'll see it jump. And it'll show us if we have a bad vibration somewhere. You can save it. It's also down here for access left, right, front, rear, and up and down. So we can stop it. We can download it. We can play it. It's a really cool feature. And then events. This right here shows us anything that we have had issues with when we powered it on, cold start, self-test. So it's just a bunch of really good features in the advanced menus. A lot of this stuff you don't ever really use or need unless you're having a problem, like the diagnosis section, I never go through. Counters, I only do after I do a rebuild. Advanced menu is where I spend all of my setup. This is where I like to come in. This is where I like to tweak and adjust. So let's go to the field. Let's get a flight on this model and go over some of the things that we talked about, but in flight. So we are at the field. We got the Goose Sky RS4 Venom, because this is one of the last models I have. I don't have any bigger models left on Icon other than my Nitro, a couple of my Nitros, but. So we're gonna use this model today. So one thing to remember for your PIDs, and this is gonna be the same for aileron and for elevator, is that the P, short way to remember, P is the system respond input, meaning how it responds to that stick movement. I is the holding power of the access of that helicopter, so of, of that control. So the holding power of elevator, the holding power of aileron. 
and D is the stop power, how the model reacts in a stop. And then the feed forward gain is the amount of feed forward feel from the swash plate to the head. And now for the tail, there is no P, it's just I and D and it's the same thing. It's the holding power and the stop. So simplest way to remember that. So we are gonna flip off throttle hold. We're gonna spool up into our normal mode and we're gonna see how the helicopter responds. Now this is no 3D mode, it's just hover mode. So we're gonna hover it, feels good. Now what we're gonna do is the first thing I like to test is my tail stop. So I'm gonna do a puro and then let off the stick. So left, it stops okay. It's not great, but it's not hard. Now right, see how that, look at that bounce. That little bounce back. So the first thing we are gonna do is we want to adjust that that stop gain, the D. So we know we want to adjust that. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do some normal flying. We're gonna push it forward, hard input, bring it back, hard input. We're watching the helicopter. We're seeing how it responds. We're gonna go left, right. We're trying to see if we have any wobbles, any bobbles. Helicopter feels really, really good, honestly. All stock settings. Exception of rotation rate and I upped a little bit of what I normally do. So we feel good. Now we're gonna go up into an idle up, higher head speed. Same thing, tail, stops good. Stop, a little bit of bounce back to the right. So that right there, we wanna adjust the D gain for. Now we're gonna do the same, but on this one, we're gonna roll it over. So we're gonna roll it over, stop. Roll it, stop. So right now that feels really, really good. Same with elevator. Now I know a lot of you guys aren't into 3D, so you would do the same thing. Push it forward, pull it back. You wanna snap it. That's how you try to find where your, your most best tuning would come from. But that right there, we're gonna give it a little bit of pitch so it'll climb out. That is a hands-off hover. But again, hands-off hover. Really solid feeling. We're gonna do some flying. Helicopters, no porpoising. The hold power feels good. So we're gonna do some normal flips. Stop it. Aileron TikToks. No shaking, no wobbling. So that would be your stop. If you're in a TikTok and it shakes, that would be your D gain. Feed forward feels good. Let's do some circuits. Or hurricanes. So you just want to fly the model and see what it feels like. Now for that tail, we're going to come down and we're going to land it. Now we want to do that for all three, but luckily since we are using an SRXL2, we don't have to go into the icon with a laptop. We can actually just come right over to our SRXL2 mean, menu on Spectrum, which is the inside. We're going to go sticks, corner, and in both of them. We're going to let it come up. You might not be able to see this on your screen. So I'm going to come down and I'm going to go to my tail. My cyclic I'm happy with. I don't want to adjust nothing on the cyclic. So I want to come down to my tail. I'm going to enter my tail menu and I want to come down to my D gain. So now I'm going to go down my D and in my, the problem I noticed it was in both flight modes. So we're going to come down, we're going to enter and we're going to up from 40. I'm going to go just to 50. It might be a little bit high of a jump. You really want to do about four points at a time. Okay, we're going to lock that in. And we're going to go to our bank one, or idle up one. And we're going to raise that one to 50. We want, we're raising our stop power. Now, I also want to show you about tail pre-comp. Because that's another question about how to add pre-comp. That, again, is in your tail menu. So now we're going to back out of this menu. And in the tail... You have pitch pre-comp and cyclic pre-comp, which is what we talked about. So let's exit out of this and we'll talk about pitch pre-comp and cyclic pre-comp now. Okay, so now we're gonna exit out, we're gonna fly. So we're gonna flip back into stunt one. We're gonna feel that tail stop now. Much crisper stops, no bouncing back. Okay, so pitch pre-comp now. What, the, what they mean by that is when you go to full positive pitch, the tail is staying under the helicopter. Negative pitch, under the helicopter. Positive pitch, you can see a little bit of a little tiny bit of a walkout, so you would want to adjust it. And the same inverted. Negative pitch, 
tails there, positive pitch, tails there. So that's where you would adjust the pitch pre-comp. Now cyclic pre-comp is when you would be doing like forward. So you would feed forward and the tail would walk or back and the tail would walk. Or if you're in a TikTok and the tail is drifting. So for example, the tail would walk right. So you're in a TikTok and the tail does that. That's when you would adjust your pitch pre-comp for aileron. And then you would do the same with elevator. The tail is staying right there. So we don't have to adjust any of that, but sometimes you do, and that's what they mean by that. The heli this helicopter flies really good. This is a bone stock icon setup. So we'll go ahead and land it because we are almost out of power. The only thing I did was I added some pitch lightning. You see me add a little bit of D gain on the tail. All the other gain numbers are stock to the settings, but not every helicopter is the same, and maybe your RS4 Venom needs a lot of tuning. So I hope this video just goes over what to look at, what to do. It's really hard on Icon to sit there and go back and forth with the laptop. So if you have an SRXL2 and you're running Spectrum, that's great because then you have your forward, basic forward programming. So I hope this guy has answered a lot of your Icon questions. This is what I do on every Icon model. I fly, I see what it needs, and I tune and adjust from there. So I want to thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't already, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and remember, Patreon and PayPal are linked in every video description if you'd like to help support me. Take care and have a great day.